Hi, this is Shreyang Siddharth once again. Welcome to the next video of this object oriented programming. Now in this video, we will talk about what are abstract classes, methods and also properties in case of Kotlin. So the classes in case of Kotlin can also be abstract in nature. Now what do we exactly mean by abstract? We will check it out shortly. Now the classes in case of Kotlin can be abstract in nature. Now before going for what is abstraction in case of Kotlin, first let me show you what are abstract classes, methods and properties inside the IntelliJ IDE straight away. And thereafter we will discuss all the properties of these classes and methods. So here inside the IntelliJ IDE, I have a class of person and class Indian. Now suppose I want to inherit all the properties of this class person. So I will simply make this class person as open as simple as that. This is the basic rule of the inheritance in case of Kotlin. Now this function becomes a part of this Indian class, right? So this function go to school is actually is just a normal function with by default public and final modifier attached to it. So as we all know, the functions are by default public and final in nature. So here is the comment line for this. And now suppose inside the class of person, I define one more function such as function get the height of the person. Now this function is exactly same as this function. Both are public and final in nature by default. Now, if I want to override this function of get height inside the class of Indian, such as let's say override function get height, then the compiler will not be happy because we have to make this function as open because by default it is final in nature. So after we make it open, we can now easily override the methods inside the subclass or the derived class. Now here this Indian is actually the subclass or the derived class as we all know from the previous videos of concept of inheritance. Now notice here these methods are actually having the blank body like this. It is totally blank. So that is why the curly brackets are open and closed like this here as well. It is blank. Right. So this was about the open method and this was about this was about the final method. Right. And now let us experiment more and let us define one more function of let's say function eat. Now this time again define a blank body. So this function eat is similar to this function go to school which is again final and public by default. Right. Now suppose if I append here let's say open. So this function eat can now be overridden inside the class of Indian. Let's say override function eat simply override this method and you can define your own custom code inside this method right here. And now suppose if I change this open to let's say abstract. So what will happen now by default all the abstract methods are actually open in nature. So you don't have to specify the open keyword explicitly. So let us remove it. So this is the abstract method. Now when we declare any abstract methods or a class or a property, then that abstract declaration don't contains a body. So here this eat method is actually having a blank body. This is the blank. This is the body of the method, right? So when we declare something as abstract, then that declaration should not contain any body. So these curly brackets should not exist. So let us delete it. So right now here is the difference between a normal function, a open function and an abstract function. So here in case of abstract, we don't have any method body. And again, it is showing some error. This abstract method is actually present inside the non abstract class of person. So we will deal with it shortly. So right now, this method is actually abstract in nature. So let us define its. So the abstract properties are actually by default open by nature, right? So it is by default. We are having the open keyword. So we don't have to specify the open keyword again here like this. It is redundant. Now before rectifying this error here inside the main method, suppose if I create the instance of the class of person equal to let's say new person like this. So here it does not show any error. Now, in order to rectify this error, suppose this method can only exist within the abstract class. 
So here I will simply append the abstract keyword, right? And now here again, by default, the abstract properties, classes and methods are actually by default open in nature. So we don't have to specify open again because it is by default open by nature, right? Now here it shows some error. Cannot create an instance of an abstract classes. Now it is a property of an abstract class that you cannot instantiate or create the objects of this abstract class, right? So the compiler will simply throw some exception here because this is not allowed to create any object of the abstract class. So here I have to remove that statement in order to rectify the error, right? Now what is the advantage of using the abstract method such as eat? Now here inside the subclass of Indian, I have simply overridden this eat method and also get height method. This get height method is actually open in nature and this eat method is actually abstract as well as open in nature. That is why we were able to override it here. Now suppose if I delete this get method from here, then the compiler is still happy. It does not show any error. Because this open function get height is optional. We can or we cannot override it inside the Indian class. It is totally up to our choice. But if we remove this abstract method of eat, let us remove it. Then here the compiler is not happy. It simply says that this Indian class should override all the abstract methods and properties present inside the super class of person, which is again abstract in nature, right? So if you define any abstract keyword in the super class of person, so you need to override this method inside the class of Indian, which is the subclass. So here to rectify this error, I will simply press Alt plus Enter and simply implement the members and simply select this eat method. And here we go. The IntelliJ IDE has, has simply done the job for us. Here we have override function eat and here this is the to do implementation. And now if you want, you can optionally override this get method because it is only open, not abstract. And now what about the field variables? Suppose if I create here where let's say name of the type of string, right? Equal to let's say dummy underscore name. This is my dummy name, right? Now suppose if I want to override this property inside the class of Indian, so I have to make this variable as open as we all are aware of this similar to what we have done here, right? Or here by default. So here inside the class of Indian, I will simply override the variable of name of the type of string. And here, let's say I will call dummy underscore Indian name, right? Something like that. So I have simply overrided the value of name inside the subclass. And now the default value is dummy Indian name. Now, suppose if I append abstract here and so we need to remove this open keyword because it is redundant right so here now it shows some error that the abstract variable or the property cannot be instantiated now similar to method like we don't have a method body in case of abstract method here again we can never instantiate a property that is abstract in nature so here we have to remove this equal to operator so the abstract property and abstract method are just defined. They don't contain any code inside it, right? So now suppose if I comment this here, so the compiler is again not happy because in the super class of person, we have a abstract variable name. So whatever we define as an abstract, we need to override it compulsorily inside the subclass. So here, if I remove this, and now if I press Alt Enter, so here it simply shows implement members. So simply click on it, select the name, hit on OK. So by default, the IntelliJ IDE has simply overridden the variable name, which is of the type of string. Now this is the default getter and setter. So let us remove it. We don't need it. And now here, if you override a variable or the property, then you need to define its body. That is, you need to initialize it. Let's say again, dummy Indian name. So this was all about the abstract 
class, person, abstract property and also abstract method. And now here let me add some comment line. You cannot create the instance of the abstract class for your better understanding. So at last, let us check out the properties of the abstract class methods and also property, right? So here the role of abstract class is to just provide the set of methods and properties. That is the abstract class is just of the placeholder use. It just provides the set of methods and properties without any value or without any method body. So the abstract class are actually partially defined class. It is a class but it is partially defined, right? It does not contain its, its own code. And next we have abstract methods which have no body when declared, right? And also we have abstract properties that cannot be initialized when declared. So previously we had this abstract method that contains no body Again, we have abstract property that contains no value, right? So at the end, what we conclude from this video? So at the end, we conclude that we cannot create the instance or the objects of the abstract class, right? And we always need to override the abstract methods properties inside the derived class or the subclass. Otherwise, the compiler will show some error. This is the basic rule of abstraction in case of Kotlin. So this was all about this video. Hope you like what you saw and see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.